out. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Amen. What an encouragement this morning. We're strong in our weakness, amen, because it's not our strength but His. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Praise the Lord. That's wonderful. Well, if you have your Bibles this morning, if you would, find the very first book of the New Testament. The book of Matthew, please, in chapter number 7. As you can see, <clears throat> we're still not through with the door. I'm sure someone is saying, aren't you through with that door? Let's get that door off that stage. I might have another one next week. We'll see. Matthew chapter 7. Remember three weeks ago I introduced our church theme for 2023. And the church theme is to step through or stepping through open doors, living in God's opportunities. And we're to watch for those open doors and step through those doors that God opens wide to us knowing that those opportunities are for us uh, to serve Him and to grow in Him. So the very first message that I preached along this line was called, Don't Ignore the Open Door. And we talked about the door of salvation. And uh, we know that the door of salvation is wide open. Amen. Amen. Wide open, as wide as that door can go. It's wide open, this thing of salvation. It's wide open for anyone. It's wide open for everyone. Amen. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. So we talked about that door. Then we talked about also the door of service, the door of ministry. We, we covered that door with I don't know, 20 plus uh, different types of ministry or callings. And uh, we know that all of us have a place in God's kingdom and a place in God's work. God didn't call us to sit sour and soak. He called us to serve. It's ours to be busy about the Lord's work, to occupy till He comes. And I hope that you found your place where God wants you to serve. Our third message, which was last Sunday, was entitled, The Threat at the Threshold. And we talked about how Satan will put obstacles in our way when we're ready to step through a door. We, we took you to Genesis chapter 4. We talked about uh, Cain, the Hebrew word Cain, the one who who was given an opportunity, a second opportunity, to do right. And God said, if you won't do right, if you will do right, you'll be accepted. But if you don't, sin lieth at the door. The word lieth means to crouch like an animal about ready to attack. And so with every opportunity that God gives you, for every door that God gives you, for every threshold, that God wants you to step through, Satan is going to put something there for you to step over. And so sometimes stepping through an open door means you got to step over some sin, step over some hindrance, step over something that, is, that has caused you pause from going through the door. And yet we realize that with Satan, nothing is original, nothing is real. Many times God's people are afraid of shadows, and sometimes He'll cast a shadow on the door and make you stop and maybe even hinder you from going through that door. And so we talked about that last week. This morning I want us to see another door, another truth about a door. And remember, we're talking about opportunities to do God's will. And so this morning, if you have your place in Matthew 7, let's stand together. And we're going to look at two verses, that's all, and then I'm going to start preaching to you. Matthew 7 and verse number 7 and 8. These are familiar verses. 
The Bible says, and it's red letters, these are the words of the Lord, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. We started talking about the door wide open. The door of salvation. Then we talked about those opportunities that God gives us to serve Him. And sometimes the door is not completely wide open, but it is open for you to go through. Then we talked about that threat last week at the door. And now the door is not completely open, but it is open enough for you to step over the threat and through the door. Today I want to talk about that closed door. Sometimes the door of opportunity seems stuck. It seems closed like it'll never open. Maybe you feel sure that that's the door you're supposed to go through. You feel sure that God has an opportunity for you. And you feel sure that it's that door. But for some reason it just just doesn't open. It's stuck, at least for now. So what do you do with a stuck door? All right, that's what I want to address this morning. So let's pray. Father, we ask today that you'd help me. Lord, I'm an, I'm an older preacher now. I, I'm not going to run the aisles and and, and holler and scream and, and, and there'll be a, not so much acrobatics, but certainly there's a message here and a truth that we need to know. And I pray that you'll give me the words that will hold the attention of God's people, that we might hear what you have for us. And that, and that knowing that, Lord, sometimes the doors are closed for a purpose and we need to find that purpose and understand that purpose. So help me, I pray today as I preach, and of course we'll give you all the praise and the glory for what you do, and we ask it in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You might be seated this morning. Recently, my wife and I were staying in the home of a dear friend in Texarkana. We were there to visit our grandchildren. The owner was not at the house, and she had offered the house for us to stay in. And uh, this particular house is a smaller house, but it's located in uh, kind of the downtown area. Uh, It's an older home in an older established area. Uh, Very, very beautiful house. It's been redone, and you got the original floors and the old, the doors with the big, thick uh, uh, door facings and, and, and all that. It's pretty cool. It's a, it's a really a nice place to stay, and we appreciate her letting us stay there. Well, uh, she knows I like coffee, so she left the coffee there and the K-cups and all that. And so I jumped up that first morning and got me some coffee. That's, that's just the first thing you always do, right? You just you got to have the coffee. You can't even talk to God without coffee. <laughs> so I got my coffee and I opened the back door. And uh, she had a storm door there, and I was going to step outside. She had some benches and whatnot on the backyard. I was going to go and sit and, uh, and pray and, and, and drink my coffee. Well, I opened the door, and then I got to the screen door or the, or the storm door, and the latch, I, I, it just, I couldn't, couldn't open the latch. And uh, so, uh, you know, I, I tried to figure out maybe I wasn't, maybe I'd locked it and maybe I needed to unlock it. I couldn't remember it. I was trying to get, and, and everything I pushed, I pried, I pulled, I yanked around and I tried everything. Had to set my coffee down to, to work, try to get that door open. And I was getting aggravated and I'll be honest with you, don't tell her I did this. But I karate kicked that thing. I mean, I mean, I just went away with my foot. And it opened. <laughs> it opened. And uh, so I told that lock who was boss right there. And uh, that thing opened after I karate kicked it. Now I got to thinking about that. And I wonder how many of you this morning, if we were to talk about the things that you desire in life, 
maybe some opportunities you'd like to see in your life and some prayers to be answered in your life. And, and you're just about ready at that point, at this point, to just kick a door open. You know, I mean, you just, you know, you get in the flesh, you know how to get, you ever get in the flesh? Huh? You ever get in the flesh? Come on now. I know you ain't a bunch of monks and nuns. You sometimes get in the flesh. And uh, so you're just about ready to knock a door down, make an opportunity. You know how that goes. But the Lord said here in the verses that we just read, three very important words. The word ask, the word seek, and the word knock. Now we can associate the word knock with the door. But it says if you knock, what's the very next little two-letter word? What's going to be opened? It. It. If you knock, it shall. What is that something, that, that it, that you've been praying about for a long while now? Maybe you've been praying about it for months or maybe years you've been praying about this it. What is this it that you're concerned about? What is this it that you desire? Didn't the Lord say that that, that, that He'd give us the the desires of our heart? And and, and we say, okay, I, I, I have this at the top of my prayer list. What is at the top of your prayer list? What is that it that you've been praying about? You're sure God wants you to have it. Surely God wants you to have this it. It may not be a thing. It may be a circumstance. It may be an opportunity. It may be a state of mind. It may be any of these number of things, but this it has some kind of definition in your life, and it's there at the top of your list, and it's there on the top of your mind, and every time you go to prayer, it comes up. This it... Maybe this it is the door of health. Maybe it's that opportunity to be well. You've sought the Lord. You've searched your heart. You believe it's God's will that you be healed. Look, even though we are Baptists, we still believe in divine healing. Amen. Amen. I didn't say divine healers. I said divine healing. Jesus is still the great physician. There's no doubt in my mind He can fix anything that's wrong with you physically this morning. He can fix it. Maybe it's a health issue. And so maybe you've searched your heart. You believe it's God's will. You, you believe God wants you to be healed of whatever this disease is, whatever this it is. But, but the door is shut. It's closed. For some reason, God hasn't opened that door to you yet of hell. And, and you feel sure now. You wonder if it'll ever open. You know, I'll tell you what. It, we talked about long-suffering this morning in Sunday school. And folks, sometimes you, you get in that state of mind. You just you, This thing has made you suffer. Not only mentally but physically and you're suffering and you you want to be patient on God but it's hard it's hard to be patient especially with God and you think will God ever open that door maybe that that it is the door or the opportunity for some financial situation some financial solution in your life finances maybe you've not been the best steward in in your finances and things have happened maybe it's not even a, a matter of stewardship uh, health costs go up sometimes you pay money out of pocket just to see a doctor and you've got to see a doctor and and, and the money is not there anymore and you and, and you know you ever wonder how many people in our city just talk about Wichita Falls man how many folks in our city uh, can't afford to see a doctor can't go to a doctor. That's why they go to the ER and jam it up because it's for, that's their primary, the ER. Right? We're just being honest. Maybe that's you. That's your primary care center, you know? And, and it's just, you just don't have the money. I mean, we're at a point now, I mean, good night. If you buy 
a, 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 a shopping basket full of eggs, you're going to need an armed escort to your car. Right? Man, I'm telling you, it's crazy. Money, I mean, you, you know, the, the bills are going up, gas is going up, everything's going up, and, and your paycheck isn't. And, and you're having a tough time, and you're saying, now, Lord, I need help. I need to get this. And the door still seems shut. Maybe it's the door to some financial issue. Maybe it's the door to a better job. Maybe you're, maybe you're one who's looking for a better job. Maybe you're just looking for a job, any job. Can I tell you, there's jobs to be had. And you'll feel a lot better sweating for it than sitting on the couch and letting the government send it to you. You'll feel a lot better. You get out there and sweat it out, work and earn that paycheck. But, but you're looking for a job. Maybe that's the deal. You're looking for some way to feed your family and yourself, and the door seems stuck. Maybe it's the door to ministry. You believe God wants you to do a certain thing in His kingdom. You, you even know that you're gifted to do a certain thing in the ministry. But, but that door of opportunity has not yet been open to you. And you're waiting on the Lord. And the door seems stuck. Maybe it's the door of some relationship. I would, I would reckon that this may be a major problem with a lot of us. Maybe there's some relationship in your life that has gone awry. It's gone sour. Um, something has happened. A situation has arisen. Maybe a loved one has left your fellowship for whatever reason. Uh, it's not the same as it was. Maybe a, ch a child has, has abandoned their parent. Maybe a parent has abandoned a child. Uh, maybe the, the love has been broken between a spouse and a husband, been damaged. The trust is no longer there. The honesty is no longer there. The relationship is waning. Uh, maybe a divorce is looming. Maybe it's already happened. A relationship issue. The door seems stuck like it will never open. So what do we do? How, how, how do we adjust to that? How do we accept that? Are we supposed to accept that? Could it be that sometimes the, the, the shut door is not necessarily God saying no? Maybe it's God saying just not now. Are you with me? Just, just not now. Uh, do you understand this morning? I hope you understand this. That when it comes to the will of God, it's not just about the what. And it's not just about the where. And it's not just about the how. Sometimes it's about the when. The timing of it. Uh, you may, you may say, well, I'm ready, but the door of opportunity may not be ready. The people on the other side may not be ready. There may be an opportunity with somebody behind this door. But if you go to kicking that thing over. If you go to kicking it over and busting through. Uh, you may damage the one behind it. Sometimes you've got to give others a little breathing room. I, and listen, that's exactly what happened with the prodigal son and his father. There's no doubt in my mind the prodigal's father loved the prodigal. But he, he let the prodigal go. He could, have, he could have said, no, you're not leaving this house. Not with all that bag of money. You're not leaving. You're staying right here. We're going to work this out. And he could, have, he could have claimed tough love and made it happen. And as forceful as he might have been with that boy, that boy still would have been a prodigal in his heart. But the father said, here it is. And he watched that boy leave. He watched him leave. And I'm sure it hurt him deeply. I'm sure it hurt him fiercely to let the boy go. Uh, they didn't have cell phones in that day. They didn't have television, radio, uh, you know, all these communication abilities. But maybe ever so often somebody from that city far away uh, came into the city where the prodigal's father lived. And, and maybe the prodigal said, hey, you've been to such and such city. And the boy said, yeah, I've been there. He said, did you see my son? Yeah, I saw him. What was he doing? Well, last I heard he was in a pigsty. 
Last I heard, he was feeding pigs a bunch of slop. And looked like he had a little slop on his, on his lip, his face. Maybe he'd been eating some of that slop too. You imagine that father probably thought to himself, uh-uh, no, no, no. I, I'm leaving. I'm going to find him. I'm going to rescue him. All of us have it within us as Christians. We have a little bit of a savior complex, don't we? We're going to save somebody. We're going to, we're going to swoop in like Superman, cape and all, and we're going to save the day. And that boy's not going to wear slop no more. He's not going to eat slop no more. He's coming home. I'm going to, I'm going to run down there and I'm going to whisk him out of that stick pie, uh, pigsty and bring him home and I, and I'm going to save the day. And you know what? You hadn't helped him. You hadn't helped him at all. That boy had to come to himself. That's the only way. And it's sure hard when you want to bust through that door and save the day. It sure is hard just to stand back and watch it all kind of turn sour and get worse and you wonder if that person will survive it or not. It hurts. It hurts. Especially a parent when you've invested so many years of your life. Are you listening to me, Mama, Daddy? It's tough. I understand. It, it's, a, it's a fine line between encouraging somebody and in, or, or enabling somebody. It's a tough line. It's a tough line to hold. I understand that. I'm not belittling anybody here that has that situation. It's a hard one. But sometimes you've got to let them go. Sometimes they just got to go. And, and, and they've got to... They 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 got to get in that pigsty. Man, it's quiet in here right now. You're not asleep, are you? Everybody awake? You got your thinking cap on. Tough, isn't it? You tell them growing up, think for yourself. <laughs> oh, come on, quit. Think for yourself. What do you think? That that was me with my kids. Think for yourself. Think for yourself. Now I'm saying, don't think for yourself. <laughs> think like I want you to think. Yeah. Right? Amen. Don't always work that way. Maybe it's the door of some relationship. And so you have this situation where obviously the door is closed in Matthew 7. And the Lord said, ask, you shall, you shall uh, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find, knock. And it shall be opened unto you. And the it there is that door of opportunity. Maybe you've been praying about something for a long time. The answer's not come. You've been thinking about it, wondering about it. The answer's not come. The door is not open. It's closed. What do you do with that shut door? Now I want you to listen to me carefully. The words ask, seek, and knock are three entirely different words in the Greek. Therefore, I have to believe that they are three entirely different actions in the Greek. Three. Now, I say that because there are many, many scholars in our day, and Bible students, and Bible scholars are far smarter than me, but they'll say, they'll say that those three words, ask and seek and knock, all mean the same thing. They're all synonyms for the same thing. Uh, you know, it means like prayer and, and seek would be more prayer and, and knock would be the most prayer. Uh, it would be like praying, uh, you know, uh, praying on your knees, praying on, uh, uh, on uh, your all fours and then praying on your face. Uh, you know, it'd be like all, saying those three are all meaning prayer. I don't believe it. I think these are more than just three kinds of prayer or three types of prayer. I think just like, and I'm glad this door is up here for the illustration, you can't see them, but every door has three hinges. Okay? And so I think there's three things that need to line up and three actions that need to happen in order for this door to be open. And of course it'll be the Lord that opens it, but once you've made the proper preparations, and like I said before, it, sometimes it's not about the door itself, it's about us. It's about us. We we need some preparation for this. We need some getting ready for this. What does it mean? First of all, follow with me, pray. Ask. Ask 
and it shall be given. Is that what it says in your Bible? Ask, and it shall. That's what prayer is. Prayer is asking. Now, listen carefully. Understand something very important. Prayer is not just about you and me getting in a position to seek God about what we want. A lot of preachers have it this way. A lot of preachers are preaching it this way in these days. It's all about God working for us. And God, if I get myself in a position before God that I can ask what I will and He'll give it to me no matter what it is. I'm just, it's all about Him giving to me. It's about me asking God giving. Prayer is more than that. Listen carefully. Prayer is more about getting us into a position to settle in and accept what He wants. So I go to God and I pray. And if all your prayer is this, God, um, I need some more money for this and that. God, would you do this for me? God, would you do that for me? God, I need that. God, I need that. God, I need that. And that's your prayer. And then I'm not saying God won't answer your prayers, but prayer is more about this. Jesus taught us to say at the end of each prayer, what? Thy will be done. He's in the garden. Thy will be done. He told him, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. It's more about me being on my knees before that door and saying, God, I need this door to open. God, I need you to give me that money. God, I need you to open that relationship again. God, I need my health back. God, wait a minute. God knows all that. Does God not know that? God knows all that. It may be. This is far more important. God, I'll do whatever you want. God, if the door never opens, okay. I'll, I'll accept it. If that's what you want, God, I'll bear it. If that's my cross, I'll carry it. If that's what you want, God. It's interesting to me. And by the way, have you ever gone into your prayer closet thinking one way and came out of your prayer closet thinking another? Amen. You know why? Because not only does God, through prayer, change things, sometimes through prayer, God changes us. That's right. Amen. And we come out different. We come out different. Listen carefully. It's interesting to me that the word pray in our modern world, is used the most in judicial settings. It's a judicial word. In other words, a lawyer may say, I pray the court will do such and such, right? Or, I pray your honor will hear such and such. And it's a judicial word. We use it. Uh, prayer or asking is our way of getting the attention of the greatest judge in all the universe. So we approach God with our petition and our cause and we give it to God and we wait on His verdict. Concerning the door that you won't open, have you gotten a verdict from God yet about what that it is, what you want? Has He given His affirmation or His confirmation? Or are you afraid He will strike it down and overrule it? I've learned over the decades of being a pastor that many times people will tell me, you know, preacher, I've prayed about it. I've prayed about it. God doesn't want us here anymore. We're going somewhere else. And I know within my heart they're not making a good decision. You know, stick it out. Stick it out. I'll change or maybe I'll leave. But stick it out. <laughs> if that's, I mean, if you're not you're upset with me, okay, we'll figure a way through it. But don't leave the best church in town. Well, that's just me. I'm a little biased, but it's, I prayed about it. I have prayed about it. You know, I've got God's mind on the matter. Well, I hope they have. But sometimes people really don't pray. You know what they do? Uh, God, here's what I'm going to do. Will you, will you just put your stamp of approval on it? 
They've already made up their mind and they just want God to approve it. Maybe you've done that. Uh, God, I need some money, and if you would, send it in the mailbox tomorrow afternoon. Uh, it's, uh, you know, this much money, and uh, I want that postman to put it in the mode. Uh, this way we're going to work it out, God. Okay, you okay with that, God? <laughs> That's not prayer. Prayer is saying, God, if you work it out, I'll be okay. I know I can trust you. However you want to work it out, I can trust you. You see, that's what prayer is, and I've learned this. Now, so a lot of people just talking themselves into believing something and asking God to put his approval on it. So if you want this door to to open, you believe it should be open, but it's closed, it may be first, first, that you have not really prayed about it. You have not really surrendered to God about it. It may be that God will send you away for a while. You know what? There may be somebody over here that's going through what you're going through. Maybe they need a little time to watch you and see what you do. Right? What are you going to do? Okay, you, you, you had, you've had a stroke. And people are saying, okay, well, how's she going to handle that? What's she going to do? I, I've had, I got physical troubles too, like her. And I'm asking God to heal me. And, and, and he's not done it. And he's not doing that for her yet. But wait a minute. We, there's, some, there, there's some learning to be done here. Amen. We all had, I, you know, I had my heart attack, quote, unquote. I barely remember having one, but they said I did. But, you know, what do I learn from those things? I learn something. God, God, God has his own plan in his own time, in his own way. Let God be God. And if you can walk away from your prayer closet saying, let God be God, you've, you've done the first step. Amen. Step number two, seek. All right? Seek. So what does that mean, this word seek? It's interesting as, again, I, for time I get right to it. The Greek word translated seek literally means, number one, to search, number two, to plot, number two, to invest, or number three, to investigate. Okay, you've prayed. You have it settled in your mind what God wants you to do or have, and in the process, God has not changed your mind or your prayer, so now it's time to search. It's time to plot. It's time to investigate. He said, seek, and ye shall find. Search. First of all, search the Scriptures. Search the Scriptures. Make sure that whatever this thing is, you go to God and say, God, I need a new car. Would you, would you make it a BMW? God, I need a new car, boy. God, I want that Dodge Charger. You know I do. Man. Oh, Lord, you know I'd be a happy man, that Dodge Charger. Black interior. Oh, come on, Lord. Huh? Search, search the scriptures. Does God want me to have a BMW? Or, you know, be content, the Bible says, with what you have. And what if God gives you a little beat up Kia? What, what, what was those cars? Yugo. Remember Yugo? Was it a Yugo? Remember them Yugos? Anybody ever? Yeah. Well, got, there's an old Yugo out there somewhere. Somebody wanting to sell you for $50. And, but that's what God wants you to have. Now, I know God's not in the scrap business. I know that. God can do whatever He wants to do. But I'm telling you, my friend, you better search the Scriptures and make sure that whatever He gives you, whatever He does for you, lines up with the Scriptures. And it may just very well be that God wants you to be content with what things you have. Uh, Search your heart. Make sure the door that you want open is not self-serving. Not self-serving. Not selfish. Boy, this is, I don't know how this is hitting you, but why it's hitting me, I think about the things I pray for, and sometimes I wonder, if I'm, am I being selfish to pray that way? I mean, I pray that God will fill every pew in this church. I pray that God would bring folks in and, and, and that this place would be packed out and, and I wouldn't forget my tie to preach. That's an inside joke, y'all. Some of y'all know. And that's, I always pray, though, am I praying selfishly? Is that selfish? I, I hope it's not. I hope it be to God's glory and not mine or yours, but God's. 
Search my heart. The Bible says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Make sure that what you're praying about, what you really want, it lines up with His Word. Investigate, then investigate your options. So God wants to, He needs a job. Alright? God, I need a job. God, I need a job. You heard that, God? Hurry up, I need a job. No. <laughs> you got to search. You got to search. You got to search the want ads. You got to search the, 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 the classifieds. You got to search on the internet. You got you to look around town for the help wanted signs. You got to search. That's so simple. It ought to be a gimme, but a lot of people don't get it. You gotta search. You gotta look. Okay, God begins to show you where He wants you, what He wants you to have, that door. Search. Search. The root word for investigate is invest. You've got to invest some time into this thing. A young man wants to go to college. Now, I'm not saying college is for everybody. Some people, yeah, maybe not every Christian. I've heard it said, it, I grew up. And my kids grew up thinking, well, they've got to have some Christian college. Not always the case. Not always the case. Sometimes Christian college hurts more than helps. But you know what? If they've got a good, strong church, why send them to somebody else's church, college, where they can grow that church? I Keep them here, let them grow, and build my church. Amen. Um, I may keep Braden. Amen. But Braden might need college. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Search. Then, I know you're tired, knock. All right? Now, the word for knock in the Greek means to rap. No, we're not talking about music. <laughs> rap ain't music. I said rap ain't music. Yeah. Now, the word knock means to rap with some force. All right? Me and my, uh, me and, well, I'd say a friend of mine years ago, we were out visiting. He'd never gone door to door visiting, uh, soul winning. So I said, you know what? Hey, I'm just going to throw you in the deep end. Just, I'll let you have this door. And just, just tell folks about Jesus. Give them a track. Tell them who you are in the church. Okay. He goes to the door. I'm sitting there. He goes, there. here he is. Huh? Right? He don't want nobody to come to the door. He's scared. He, he don't want nobody to come to the door. That's like that police officer, Tyler, a good friend of ours, Tyler, and he was police uh, department a sergeant. And uh, I went out soul winning one time with him, door to door knocking. And here's the way I go to the door, I'm like this, you know. He goes to the door like this. <laughs> right? That's, that's, yeah, he don't know what's behind that door. So, um, but it means to rap, okay? And uh, let's say a young man wants a certain job again, okay? So he's praying. Now he's looked at his options. Here's one that seems really good. He believes God wants him to have this job. So what does he do? He goes to the door and he knocks. Okay, it's a good, strong, convictive knock. All right? When that boss man comes to the door... He doesn't say, uh, y'all think maybe, uh, you could use me doing something, uh, no. You speak it up and say, sir, I don't know everything, but I'm a fast learner. Could you give me a chance? I learned how to, I learned how to do this or that or the other. I'm a pretty fast learner. I, I know how to take directions and instruction and, and give me a shot, you know, right? You speak up with confidence, you knock, you knock. And, and, and sometimes that's part of getting that door opened. Understand this morning, I don't have all the answers, but I'm telling you that what, maybe it's a relationship. The door is shut, and you want that relationship back. Don't bust the door down. Give that person some time to breathe. Give them an opportunity to feel the Holy Spirit's moving. It just may be even, it may be that they'll come to you first before you go to them. But, but you want the door opened again. You want the relationship again. You understand what I'm saying? You believe it's God when you've prayed about it. God seems to be okay with it. 
and you've investigated all the other options and this, I'm, I'm, okay, hello? Maybe it's a text. Maybe, maybe it's a letter. There's folks in our church who, who are estranged from loved ones, from, from children, okay? Uh, write a letter. Send it. You say, well, I did that, and they never returned it. But, but they got it. It didn't say return to sender on it anywhere. Well, they got it. So the seed was planted, right? You're knocking at the door. You're knocking at the door. You're knocking at the door, right? You got health issues. Okay. You prayed. You, you believe God wants you to be well. Okay, you're waiting on Him. You seek out your options. What can I do? What doctor can I see? Look, there's nothing wrong with you seeking out doctors and, and, and medicines and all that. And you go and you knock and, and you get some answers. And, and, and maybe through all that, God uses those things to bring the answer. Now, there's one last thought, and I'm almost done. And uh, I, I didn't uh, write it down on this piece of paper. Here it is, Luke chapter 11. Look with me at Luke chapter 11. And we're almost done. Luke chapter 11. Look with me if you would. Luke chapter 11, verse, verse number, starting with verse number 5. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend? And shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves, and we're talking about midnight here now. For a friend of mine in and, and his journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. <clears throat> and he from within, he didn't even come to the door, shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door's now shut. My children are with me in the bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend. Yet, because of his importunity, this guy just won't quit. He will rise and give him as many as he needeth. And I say unto you, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find and knock and it shall be opened unto you. So there we have the same scripture. Look, And he's prefacing, prefacing it by saying, look, there's this man that needed something. And he went to his neighbor's door. He knew that the neighbor had the bread, what he wanted. The opportunity was there. It was midnight. The guy's in bed. He knocks and knocks and knocks and knocks until finally the fellow from the inside says, Go away! And he said, I'm not going away. I'm not going away. I've got to have some bread. And it wasn't because his he was his friend. It's just because he was tired of him knocking on the door. Can I tell you sometimes that importunity shows God how sincere you are. Yeah. How sincere are you? Are you going to keep pounding that door and asking God, look, and, and here's the thing, and I tell folks who are seeking the will of God about something, go through all the open doors until, you, until, until God shuts one. And if it won't open, then, then go another direction. Sometimes the door won't open. But you just, but don't give up too soon. Amen. Don't give up on God too soon. God may be testing your faith. God may be testing your sincerity. God may be testing your commitment. God may be testing your importunity. Are you willing to knock and knock and knock and knock and knock until either the door opens or God changes you? And tells you to stop knocking. I don't know how that relates to you and your life and what you're needing this morning. But I'm telling you, I believe with all my heart that's what God is saying. Pray till you get God's mind on it. Maybe God changes your mind. But if it's a go, then go to the next step. Seek out, search out your options. See what's out there. God God will show you as you drift. And then when you get to that door, you think God wants you to be at. Man, knock, 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 knock. And by the way, listen, if it opens, it's going to be God. Nothing in your life is, the things in your life are not divided between sacred and secular. Everything in your life is sacred. If that door opens, it won't be because of the boss man. It won't be because of the neighbor. It'll be because God willed it. Amen. And God opened it for you. Maybe you use the boss man. Maybe you use the neighbor. Maybe you use somebody to do it. But it's ultimately God. Amen. That's right. But it's all about your commitment to that thing what is it at the top of your list if it's there don't give up on it don't give up too soon keep praying
Keep seeking. Keep knocking. Amen. Father, I pray, Lord, that maybe this little bit of something will help folks, that they'll understand the importance of, of being committed to what God wants and to working and knocking and trying to do their best to get God's will in